If you've ever wondered how I made my one chunk world, well, I forgot. Thankfully, Pask will be wrote it down. So in this video, I will bet all my map making secrets so that you too can create your very own one chunk world. There were some pretty tricky problems to solve to make this. So even if you don't want to make your own one chunk world, I hope that you'll find this interesting. Before we get started, you'll need to install World Edit. If you don't know what this is, it's basically an in-game world editor. And you can check out my 60 second tutorial if you want to know more. I'm not going to cover how to install World Edit because this is already pretty well documented. So good luck. The first thing you need to do is to create a standard Minecraft world and find a chunk that you like the look of. You can press F3 and G to view the chunk borders. And if you go into spectator mode, you can even take a look for any caves below the surface. When you find a chunk that you like, you can select the whole chunk by typing double slash chunk. Next, we need to save it to the clipboard. And finally, we need to save the clipboard as a schematic. That chunk is now saved to a file ready to be used later. Make sure you note down the coordinates of this chunk as we'll need them again shortly. The next thing we're gonna do is generate a void world, which is basically a completely empty Minecraft world. There are just a few blocks of the spawn which we can remove. With a couple more commands, we can load our schematic from before and paste it directly into the new world. Now, if we go to the same coordinates we noted down earlier, we should find our chunk. We just need to set the world spawn to a point within this chunk and bingo, new players should spawn exactly where we want them. One thing you may notice is that a lot of mobs will start to spawn in your chunk. This is because Minecraft keeps generating mobs until it hits the mob limit and there's nowhere else for them to spawn. To fix this, I created a secret chamber at the bottom of the world beneath a layer of bedrock. You can get in and out of this chamber using the ascend and descend commands. By spawning a bunch of mobs in this chamber, some of the mob allowance gets used up, so fewer mobs will spawn elsewhere in the chunk. By using commands, we can ensure that these mobs get generated with some special properties so that they won't despawn or make any noise. We also need to add a mechanism for spawning animals, since they probably won't spawn naturally. To do this, I added a bunch of command blocks to my secret chamber linked to pressure plates. If we then spawn a bunch of chickens down here, they'll walk around randomly and periodically step on the pressure plates. If I was going to do this again now, I'd probably just use a data pack and fine tune the spawn rate, but this was the best solution I could come up with at the time. To ensure that our chunk has enough ores, we can select the whole chunk and run a command to temporarily replace all stone with glass. This allows us to see the ores and if necessary add some more. When you're happy with the ore distribution, we can just turn the glass back into stone. If you want to travel to the end, you'll need an end portal. You can either build this manually or use the schematic mechanism from before to bring one in from another world. I also made the decision to include an enderman spawner to make it less tedious for players to find ender pearls. The same principle applies to other structures as well. For example, in my one chunk world, I hand placed a ruin portal and a partial village. To make the nether chunk, we need to save a schematic just like before. Only this time, instead of creating a standard void world, we need to customize it to include lava and a bedrock ceiling. Note that although this world looks like the nether, we're technically still in the overworld. Again, we can pack some mobs into a secret chamber to reduce the mob count, only this time we have to put the chamber above the bedrock ceiling. The problem is, now we have two worlds, one containing our one chunk overworld and one containing our one chunk nether. Somehow we need to combine them. Each world contains a dim folder, which represents the overworld, and a dim one folder, which represents the nether. So, all we need to do is take the dim folder from our one chunk nether world, rename it to dim one, and move it into our one chunk overworld. To get to the end dimension without interfering with our end portal, we can build another end portal inside our secret bedrock chamber. Since the end dimension is already mostly empty, 
The easiest way to make it into a single chunk is just to delete the areas that we don't want to keep. I chose to keep the chunk containing the exit portal, since we need access to this structure in order to beat the game. I also added an obsidian pillar with an end crystal to make the dragon fight more interesting. Unfortunately, whenever a player enters the end, they spawn on an obsidian platform which is always a fixed distance away from the central chunk. Originally, I solved this problem by building a giant bridge from the obsidian platform to the central chunk. I built this out of slabs to prevent endermen from spawning. If I was to do this again now, I'd probably add some sort of command to automatically teleport players from the obsidian platform onto the chunk with the exit portal. To get back to the overworld from the end dimension during testing, I added yet another underground bedrock chamber containing an end portal. Or you can just kill yourself. And there you have it. Only took me a, a year or so to get the tutorial out. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.